All right, we're going to kick it off. Thank you so much for coming to our Spotlight series today. Today we are highlighting the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. My name is Sarah Bellinger and I'm an Assistant Director of Admission here at UMass. And I'm joined um, with Kelly Gray of SBS and Farah, who's a student. So I'd like to have them introduce themselves and their titles, what they do. Um, and then I have some questions for them to get us going today. So Kelly? Yeah, hi everybody. My name is Kelly Gray and I'm an assistant dean and executive director in our SBS Pathway Center, which is our undergraduate student success center. Great. Hi everyone. My name is Farah and I'm a senior at UMass studying political science with a minor in Arabic on campus. Um, I'm involved as a tour guide. I've been a resident assistant and orientation leader. I'm currently a teaching assistant for first year seminars in SBS. And two summers ago, I got to intern in Washington DC through a program fully funded by S UMass SPS, um, which I'm sure I'll get to talk about later as well. But that is kind of my involvement, my experience as an SPS student. So I'll pass back to Sarah to kick it off. Great, thanks Farah. And thank you, Kelly. I'm, I'm thrilled both of you could join us today. We got a lot of questions when we're recruiting students about um, SBS and the majors involved in there. And one of the big questions we get um, is what makes SBS unique, you know, kind of compared to other colleges, but what kind of programs and what things are happening in SBS that you think are unique? Oh, absolutely. And I, I think that's a great question. And, and one of the things I really like about the College of Social Behavioral Sciences is we use a framework called SBS Pathways. And ultimately, to break that down, we think about the college experience as a holistic experience. And your academic and your experiential and your career and professional development all matter. So of course, what happens in the classroom matters. Of course, the major you choose matters. But in addition to that, it's the internships, the study abroad, the leadership opportunities, the chance to connect with alumni or alumni that makes your experience a robust experience so that when you go out and graduate, you'll be able to talk to employers from a holistic standpoint instead of just, here are the classes I, I took during my time here and, and what I learned. Yeah, and I can also speak to that with the SBS in DC program that I was part of, um, which I mentioned just a second ago. So that program stands for Social and Behavioral Sciences in DC. And I was part of the cohort back in summer 2019. So two summers ago now, and essentially the program funds um, 20 students from UMass, SBS, to go to DC for a 10 week long summer internship in the heart of it all. Um, and it was really, really incredible hands-on experience for me. The first time I was getting any practical experience outside of the classroom. And it meant a lot because not only was my housing covered by UMass in DC, um, but I was also living with other UMass students. So I had their support while I was navigating a new city, a new professional environment. I had the support of career advisors um, because we took a semester long seminar in the spring before that summer to prepare for internships, to prepare to be a professional um, in DC. And then when we were in DC, we also had alumni mentors in our offices. So I did get a taste of that alumni network that Kelly just mentioned and the support I found through the program was just incredible. And the one word I always use to describe it is just surreal. Um, and the fact that it was all generously provided through UMass and especially through alumni donations was just incredible. Um, and this program is only growing and growing. I think this is the fourth year that we're continuing. So um, the support just gets better and better every year, I would say. Oh, that's great. I love that program. And we always have a, we know a couple other students who have just loved, loved that, um, that program in the summertime. So that's, you know, I know that's relatively new, four years young, I like to say. Are there any other new things or, or things in your department that are happening um, that students would look forward to? Absolutely. And I mean, I think it's a long list, but I'm going to focus on just a handful that I think are most relevant. I mean, first, I want to acknowledge two academic programs that are new to us. So we have a new major in the books now called managerial economics. And ultimately, what that is, is an applied economics field. So students that are interested in business, um, who are maybe interested in the business side of using data to make decisions and, and think about not only financial decisions, but operational decisions, it's a great major. Um, and then the other is that within the journalism major, we now have a public relations track. And as you can imagine, in the business field or even in the nonprofit world or government, this is really important. I mean, how a business communicates with its constituents uh, is, is a big part of the work that they do. So the public relations track is really attractive to students. 
Um, in terms of, of non-major, some of the other new things we have is uh, a couple years ago, we started an academic fellows program. We're really excited about that. It's a, it's a leadership and an involvement opportunity for students that either identify as first generation, student of color, low income, or any other marginalized identity on campus. And it's an opportunity for students to get together, share stories, connect with faculty, staff, and alums, and overall just build community with the, in the college. Um, and it's a great program and the students have done some really amazing things, including alternative spring and break trips. And then uh, last but not least, and we're in the process right now of working on a new website for the Pathway Center and we're contracting with a company that actually gives the opportunity for students when they sign into the website to uh, pick content based on what they're interested in. So um, more to come and we haven't even launched it yet, but I'm really excited and we've been hard at work trying to make uh, you know, navigating the website an interesting and enjoyable experience for our students. That's great. Yeah, we do direct people to the website. So I hope that's a um, something they can look forward to, to seeing. Um, and what about now as we're kind of in the middle of COVID-19 and things have definitely shifted, but can you talk a little bit about what supports uh, your department does for current students and, and in particular new students to the university? So first year students that are involved in your department. Absolutely, and, and I'm going to kick it to Far in a minute too, because I know she's working in a first year seminar, which is which is pretty relevant to all of this. But, you know, I think that COVID has has changed the semester. I think that's a reality. But I think one thing that has not changed is we want to be available to students. So, you know, we're meeting with students over Zoom and one on one conversations every single day. If a student reaches out to us, we're going to find ways to connect with them. We're also doing, uh, personally, on, on Wednesday mornings, we're doing drop-in hours from 6.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. for students maybe in a different time zone so uh, they don't have to wait till the middle of the night to talk to one of us. And you know, we're also trying to do different um, configurations of connecting and supporting particularly incoming students. So for example, any of students in our exploratory program in SBS, which are for students that aren't declared in a major, but they're interested in our college, we have them broken up into cohort groups. So there's a peer intern or peer advising intern connected with every cohort. So there's an, an upper class student that that student knows they can connect with at any point. But the first year seminars are a big part of all of this. So I'm gonna kick it over to Farah to talk a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, so first year seminars are definitely a great support system for students in SBS right now. Um, I wasn't part of an SBS seminar. I was part of a different one my freshman year, but. I've definitely seen just how helpful they are, especially as you transition that first semester. And I think in that first semester is daunting regardless whether you're on campus or in a virtual environment. So now more than ever, you know, it might be a little scary for students to form those more personal connections um, online. So in the first year seminar, we really prioritize doing um, smaller group breakouts, having more in-depth discussion and really just having leniency and flexibility with everything um, right now. So. In these classes, we cover all different aspects of UMass from like healthy living um, to how you get involved in clubs to what career and professional development looks like, and even like how to explore other majors and such as students are trying to figure out what they want to do, um, what direction they want to take their UMass path on. So um, the seminar is really just a period of transition and we really want students to feel comfortable in it and feel like that's their safe place. Like even if classes are overwhelming, this is the place to ask questions. This is the place to, um, learn how to navigate UMass, and especially right now, um, where it might feel a little harder for students. Oh. And Sarah, if you don't mind, I'm going to just jump in on this. Um, you know, the thing that I want to stress as we're talking about first year students is, is we have first year students that come in in the exploratory track. And we also have students that are coming in already declared as majors within SBS. But, but whether you're declared or in the exploratory track, one thing we want is students to feel comfortable um, exploring the different possibilities that are out there. Um, and whether that's a student decides to change a major or maybe they contemplate adding a second major or a minor or we have great certificate programs, 
you know, I think that the, I always tell students, try to do your best to plan your four years, but do it in pencil because every experience you have is gonna lead to potential new opportunities. So we want students to be constantly thinking about, you know, what is it that I'm doing and what's my next step? And that's gonna change a lot based on what your, your, um, what your current experiences are. So, you know, I think as a first year student, you know, whether you're remote or whether you're in person, we're gonna really encourage you to kind of think outside the box and explore what SBS has to offer as well as the larger UMass community. That's great. That I had a question about double majoring. So do a lot of your students, I know, um, you know, Farah, you have a minor attached to your major. Do you find a lot of students in SBS have uh, kind of additional either majors, minors, certificates? Yeah, we do. And, and there's a couple of reasons for that. So I, I think one reason is that many of our majors in SBS are what we call low credit bearing majors. So it's not that the major isn't a difficult major or a challenging major, but we see the value in students looking at the world in multiple points of view. So for example, the journalism major actually requires students to do a, a major minor certificate, because if you're going to be in a journalist, you have to have knowledge outside just the field of journalism. And I think many of our majors think like that, that yeah, it's great to be an anthropologist, but also do you have a focus within anthropology? So, so we have room for students to dabble around. And I think you'll see many double majors, whether students have two majors within our college, or a major in SBS and a major somewhere else. One of our peer interns is a journalism psychology major, and that might not seem like an obvious com a combination, but if you speak to her, she knows exactly why she's doing it and has, and has really good rationale for how she's packaging everything together. Well, that's great. I just to go whoops, ahead. No, sorry, you jump in. in. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I have that minor in Arabic, which isn't in the College of Social Behavioral Sciences. But like Kelly was saying, it is very easy for the most part to add that double major, a minor, and really pursue what you want to study from all different lenses. And I have plenty of friends who are doing double majors within SPS, whether it's political science and legal studies to study both government institutions and also the legal frameworks behind it. Um, we're having an econ minor to gain some of those harder skills, um, analyzing data. So there's definitely lots of routes to take. Um, mine just happens to be a little bit outside of SBS, aside from my political science major, but it's very doable and it's something I really appreciate about um, SBS in general as well. Farah, when you came to UMass, did you know what you wanted to major in and how did that work for you to develop your interest um, in both political science and Arabic? Um, coming into UMass, I knew that I definitely wanted to study something in the social sciences. Um, I didn't really have exposure to what was in SBS, you know, given that UMass is just so big, there's so many different um, fields of study, and then even in SBS, there's a wide variety, but I came and declared as a political science major, took my intro to political, political science classes in American politics, American foreign policy, world politics, and um, I really came to like it overall. It felt broad, um, but I think especially after doing the SBS in, D, in DC internship, it really gave me that hands-on experience, like, I know this is what I want to do and I know I can craft it and personalize it um, to pursue a career in my field of interest. Um, so I think classes were extremely helpful. The support of my professors was amazing as well. Just even speaking to them, like, how did you get into this? What next step should I take? Um, speaking to career advisors, like, what can I do with my major? Um, all that reassurance was really helpful and getting hands-on experience definitely solidified my interest. Um, the Arabic minor is just something I've always had an interest in. I can speak Urdu already, um, just from my parents and Arabic is very closely related to Urdu. So that's definitely where that interest stemmed from. That's awesome. And um, am I remembering correctly that you're in the Honors College? Yes, and so does that does that mesh nicely with your um, School of Behavioral Sciences work as well? Yeah, it certainly does. So whenever you're in the Honors College, you will always have a department liaison between your field of study and the Honors College. And they're an additional, you know, resource for support. Um, mine has been Professor Paul Musgrave. And that just means I have another person to um, talk to when I'm trying to figure out how to combine my honors requirements with my political science requirements, and also how to work towards my honors thesis, which I'm currently completing right now um, on the theme of globalization. So it's been really awesome. And it's given me even wider access to classes that interest me. 
Um, so an example I always give is my first sem second semester freshman year, I took my intro to American foreign policy class, which was a larger lecture of about 250 students. And then once a week, I had a smaller honors class called Russian foreign policy, which was just the coolest thing ever. And also allowed me to get that more, you know, one-on-one -on -one connection with my professor, because it was just me, like seven other students and our professor talking about Russia once a week for like an hour after our bigger lecture. So um, it's definitely been really nice to get that more smaller class feel and have more discussion outside of the typical lecture hall. Great. Great, thank you so much. So um, I do have another question and it's, it's the most basic question, but how is the best way for a student to get more information about you, um, about SBS and, and about the programs? Where, where do they go? What do they do? Who, to whom should they contact? Uh, you know, at the moment, that would be me. So, uh, you know, my name is, again, it's Kelly Gray, and my email address is very easy. It's just gray, G-R-A-Y, at umass.edu. You, you can actually go on our website as well. Um, you know, if you just Google UMass Amherst College of Social Behavioral Sciences, you'll find a lot of great information about things happening across the college. Um, you know, but, but hopefully, you know, you'll reach out to us and have a conversation about some of the opportunities that we have to offer. You know, I think one of the things that's really unique about SBS is that, you know, most of our majors are not career tracked majors. So, um, you know, we're hoping that students are coming in with an interest and a passion. And then coming back to that pathways model, the reason we have such a robust and excellent career and professional development team is we want to take your interests and then help you find a way to get to that career path uh, that you're most interested in. I think a lot of students put pressure on themselves to pick this major that's going to define their career, you know, for the rest of their lives. And, and the reality is, is that with the exception of a few major to career links, that's just not the reality. So, you know, our students are coming in often chasing a passion, something they care a lot about, something that they're really interested in. And, and that's when you're going to do the best. Um, that's when you're going to have a college experience that you excel. So um, we'd love to talk to you about what your interests are, what things you're looking to explore, and then how we can help you connect those dots. That's great. And I think the exploratory track is a really seems like a really wonderful way for students to do that in, in that they can sample several things before they make their decision. Yeah, and Sarah, let me just add a note on that too. Any student that enters in the exploratory track, we have a lot of programming and opportunities to kind of dive in and really think through, you know, what is the best way to pick a major? And, you know, I always tell students that it's deceiving. It seems like it should be an easy choice, but it's not. It, it takes a lot because, you know, Often, if you're coming from high school, there are majors that you know about, but there's a lot of majors we have at UMass that you probably never heard about before. So it takes some time to learn what those are, unpack what they're about, and then also learn about yourself, your own personality, your strengths. So there's so many different pieces to it. So the exploratory track is a great place to kind of come in and say, you know, here's my starting point. You know, how can you help me figure out what's next? And, and that's what we're here for. That's great. Farah, do you have any uh, words of wisdom or advice for a, a student kind of starting this process and looking into um, your school and college? Yeah, um, I would say I would definitely reach out to our media sites or just go and check them out, whether it's Instagram um, or other sites like Facebook, just to see what sort of events and resources there are for students right now to give you a glimpse of if I'm a student in SBS, what resources do I have in front of me? What sort of events are going on? Um, something I didn't really do, but I'm following those pages now. And it's just really nice to keep up to date on what's happening, what's new, what's coming up. Um, so I would definitely check that out to get that inner glimpse. And just a piece of advice, I would just say, be open to trying new things for sure. I think when I came in, it took me a little bit before I started to explore different areas of interest. Um, I ended up taking like a psychology class, an econ class, um, a few other ones before I realized like, okay, I'm pretty set in what I'm studying. I do like this. Um, but I think that's definitely super important in that first year. An exploratory track is a great way to explore it as well. Um, but also just go and talk to your advisor because they will be the best resource, especially that first year, whether it's someone in pathways or whether it's like your political science advisor, um, they can truly answer any question or point you the way to the person who can't answer that question. And there's never any like dumb question, never anything too small to ask. 
Um, so especially in that first year, reach out to people who are there to support you um, and don't be afraid to try new things for sure. That's great. Thank you, Farah. Kelly, any last um, comments or parting words of advice? Sure. You know, I think I would just leave you uh, by kind of thinking through when you make your college choice, right? It's very individual to every person. But one thing, you know, as somebody who's worked at both uh, small and big schools and, and been a student at both small schools and large schools, you know, the benefit of, of a place like UMass Amherst is we're a large university with a lot of resources. But what I've really come to love about being at UMass is there are so many small communities within this large community. So if you think about the umbrella of UMass, there's then the College of Social Behavioral Sciences under that. And then there's smaller communities under that, your major, um, the exploratory track program, uh, the AFP program or the academic fellows program I mentioned earlier. Mara talked about being part of SBS in DC, which is a 20 person cohort. So, you know, it, it can feel overwhelming to think about a large campus like this, but remember Remember that you know your goal is to come here and find those smaller communities and within SBS we have a lot of those smaller communities. Uh, we really like cohort based experiences um, like SBS in DC. We also have an SBS in Boston where there's an internship program where you can either live on the Mount Ida campus or if you already live out towards Boston that's an option as well. So there's all these smaller programs you can become a part of and, and really make UMass feel like a home. That's great. I agree. I, I think the community here is one of the best things about us and those those places where students can really carve out um, their passions and and grow. And I think that's, you know, what I think that's what it's all about. So absolutely. Um, so I want to thank you both for for coming today and for sharing all that information with us. Um, and we will, I'm sure, be hearing more from from both of you in the future. Um, so thanks again, and we're gonna sign off, but have a great day. And I always finish it up by saying, go UMass. All right, so, happy to be here, go UMass. Thank you, thank you. Bye, bye everyone, bye. go UMass.